start at the beginning and not the end. Um, so I'm Ryan. I'm a uh, software engineer at Arista, and uh, I'll be talking about uh, EOS SDK today. So I've recorded this video this morning, so I wouldn't have to be fiddling at the computer while I'm talking to you guys. Um, but for those of you that aren't familiar with EOS SDK, it's our platform to let you integrate directly into the system database that Ken was talking about. Um, so you can write native applications for your switch. So it's arranged into a variety of modules and capabilities, um, different header files that you can uh, program APIs against. So we have the iproute.h module, which lets you program static routes into your network. Um, the neighbor table module, which lets you react to when an ARP entry is learned or a neighbor, IPv6 neighbor discovery um, advertisement is received. Or something like the ethlag interface module, which lets you program port channels as well as react to when a lag changes speeds or has a member added or removed. So it's about a year old, and it's been really exciting to see customers actually um, start to build their own applications. So we've seen video streaming companies uh, rapidly program multicast entries onto their switches. So as live video, um, as like video inputs come and in, um, go, they can just update their traffic and their live broadcast continues. Or people experimenting with uh, host routing protocols by reacting to MAC entries being learned or forgotten. Um, today, I want to give a demo about one, how some of our largest customers are actually using EOS SDK. And so a lot of our large customers have a bunch of different data centers. And uh, what they also have is really fine-grained knowledge of how traffic is flowing across their different data centers. Um, and so they have these flows with expected bandwidth that each flow will take and the priority of how important they think these flows are. So what they want to do is, really they want to traffic do some traffic engineering so they can have their higher priority flows taking certain links and lower priority flows taking other links. Um, so what they end up building is they build a controller which can use some sort of algorithm to distribute these flows across their different links. Uh, and then in conjunction with this, they build an EOS SDK agent that lives on our Arista devices. And this uh, SDK agent talks to our switch, uh, sorry, talks to the controller and then the controller will push us these paths, which we turn into MPLS routes. And we use MPLS to um, encapsulate the traffic. And then um, the agent tells EOS about um, what routes it should program, and we push it into hardware. So um, although EOS doesn't really support any MPLS protocols, uh, I like to think that we have the highest density MPLS router because uh, we actually can uh, we give customers the tools to write the APIs and interact with our MPLS-capable hardware to, uh, to write something, a protocol that's tailored to their own network, which is really cool. So I'm going to jump over to the switch um, and show you kind of, uh, we've emulated what some of our customers are doing here. So this is a, a small-scale example of what they have in production right now, which is exciting. So here's this uh, sample routing agent. Um, this is a PS Linux command that you can see um, it's running. And uh, these agents are fully integrated into EOS. So they have their own CLI. You can do show daemon. And they're also integrated with our upstream APIs like SNMP or eAPI. So what's this agent actually doing? Uh, if we run a show IP route and a uh, show next top group, these are routes that the controller has told our agent about. And so the agent has then told EOS about it, and we program into hardware. So traffic destined to that subnet, we're going to push this MPLS label stack on it, in this case just 109, and uh, tunnel it out of Ethernet 3. So that's all fine and dandy. Um, you could use a bunch of APIs to program routes, but what's really cool is now if you perform some sort of disruptive action, for example, if we shut down Ethernet 3, instantly the agent is notified of this change at the same level that all of our other agents are, and you can now see that the the agent told the controller about it. The controller gave us a backup route, and we have now programmed um, label 108, and we're tunneling out of Ethernet 4 instead. So to tie this kind of all together, let's take a step back and look at it from the uh, controller's point of view. So we built a little toy web UI um, that shows uh, how flows, um, how the controller has allocated flows across the network. Um, so the DB replication, it's sending from LAS to DCA to JFK, the code names I gave to these switches, um, and the user transactions, which is taking a different path. You could add a flow, the controller will recalculate it, and you can now see that it's, um, this new flow is basically being sent over this, this path. So let's have a little fun here. Oops. Um, let's look at this DB replication. It's flowing through the DCA uh, switch right now from LAS to DCA. 
So if we go and we actually shut down that interface so that that flow um, can no longer flow over that link, um, what we're going to see is, uh, now we go back over here, you can see it's taking this new, uh, it's taking that new path um, through SFO. And we'll do it one more time so we can see. And uh, we have this new convoluted path, but it's the only path available um, that the controller has calculated. So you can see all of these switches now have updated their hardware tables to program their flows and pop off labels um, as a controller has instructed them to do so. So uh, because EOS SDK lets you kind of hook in to EOS at the same level that any of our own native agents do, uh, you get these really powerful um, abilities to write real-time apps like this. Uh, and because this is like a properly supported SDK, we have versioning and documentation. What you end up with is just like a pretty simple small C++ program. Uh, and I'll show you the uh, source code just now. So uh, it's also available in Python. I'm not going to dive too much into it. We're going to release this up on GitHub if people actually want to play around with it themselves. But essentially, the SDK provides these handler methods, which start with on. And we'll give you a callback when a network event happens, so like on operational status of an interface. And we also have these manager methods, which let you get and set state out of our system database. So that like, gets, you, gets you the link speed or the operational status. So one cool thing is we're not fiddling with any uh, registers, or you don't have to worry about the quirks of how different chips deal um, with routes differently. Uh, you just simply program against the APIs. And you can really take advantage of this, like when you want to upgrade from this 48 port box that I was demoing on, and you want to move it over to one of our 1,000 plus 10 gig port modular systems. All you have to do is you just take the same binary and you transfer it to the other device, and uh, you're good to go. So yeah, it's been really cool to see what customers have been building and already deploying with SDK. All this stuff is available on GitHub, and we're continually releasing new updates. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing what people build next. So this is obviously on box is what you're talking about, right? Yeah, this is on box. Um, oftentimes, there's a component that's talking to something off box using regular Linux socket programming. Well, I, I mean, it's interesting that you're going into this because a lot of people like, I mean, these days like to talk about like REST APIs, and that's great. But the cool thing that I'm seeing here, especially on the on stuff, it seems like you're doing what um, basically event driven. Um, yeah. So, so you could have an agent that runs, you know, in your box, and you define what you're trying to look for, because um, that might want to take meaningful action elsewhere in the data center, rather than I have a daemon running, you know, out here and periodically, you know, pulling the device for stats and doing all yeah, that. Yeah. This the is switch so in that case. We're getting notified at the exact out. same time that any other agent, um, the spanning tree protocol that's running on the box, that's getting notified about a link down event. Your agent's also getting notified at kind of that same level. We, the SDK just transforms that state update yeah. into something that's sane for you to deal with. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. What's the impact, and I'm assuming limited, if you uh, code badly? Yeah, so and, if I put a sleep uh, one million out. in here, um, well, first of all, we have a process manager that would say, look, your agent hasn't done anything for five minutes. It's going to kill you and try and start you up again. Hopefully, you'll start from a sane state. It's that state-driven programming that Ken was talking about. Um, or if you crash, a process, your process crashed. You'll see a core dump in the, your var log agent saying, uh, my agent died, but it has no effect. In fact, no other process on the system even knows that um, you disappeared. You'll reconnect to SysDB, Proc Manager will start you up again, and you'll um, continue running again. So, right. And it's getting all those events. That's the publishers, publish subscribe model, right? Of, yeah. of the events coming in. Okay. Yeah. It's cool. Scary, but cool. <laughs> well, I don't find it too scary <laughs> because, yeah, Linux does a very good job of handling the processes for us. So. <laughs>